Hello, and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to have you with me today. Now, this is a little bit of a change of plans because I was originally planning on doing another one of my Gilded Age families videos today. I think I was gonna cover the JP Morgan family. However, in between the uploading of my last video and today, my post-mortem photography video blew up a little bit. It went kind of mini viral. I believe 27,000 people saw it and I gained, I think, 450 subscribers. So if you're new here from that video, hello, it's wonderful to meet you. But that video rubbed some people the wrong way and I wanted to make a follow-up video to clarify some of the things that I said. Now, this video is not for the people who said that I'm delusional or said that I'm intentionally lying or just decided to insult me. I don't think anything's gonna change those people's minds about me. I think they've kind of already made up their minds that they don't like me. However, there were some people saying, yeah, what are your qualifications? What's your evidence for these statements? And I think that's fair. I didn't really list any evidence in the original video because I my goal was to sort of to synthesize information to make it more palatable, but fair enough. I, I could easily have included evidence and citations and I didn't. So I'm going to go in today and I'm gonna do that. And I'm also going to correct some of the misconceptions about my video because some people I think misunderstood the purpose of my of my original video. So we're going to actually start with that. First off, I never said that postmortem photography wasn't a thing. It definitely was. In fact, I, I was surprised to have people in the comments saying no, it was definitely a real thing because I said this in the video. They did do postmortem photography. That was a real thing. Uh, postmodern photography was definitely a real thing. It definitely happened in the 19th century and early 20th century. The point of my previous video was to say that oftentimes photographs are misidentified as being postmortem photographs when they are in fact just pre-mortem photographs, photographs of living people. Now a lot of things can lead to a photograph being misidentified as a postmortem photograph. I'm going to quote here from an article from Atlas Obscura, so you'll have to forgive me for looking down to read it. Mike Zone, a longtime photographer and owner of Obscura Antiques in New York, said, quote, Too stiff posture, unnatural looking eyes or eerie shadows can easily start a photo's post-mortem career. And much of this supposed evidence is just evidence of an older photography system. Earlier chemical processes made colors appear differently. For example, blue eyes could come out as white and exposures may leave limbs dark in order to make the face clearer. So to the person who commented underneath my last video that they've seen images of people standing with their eyes clouded over in death, I'm sure you have seen images of people with their eyes clouded over, but it is highly unlikely that that clouding comes from death, and it is much more likely that that clouding simply comes from an earlier method of photography. Another thing that I saw a lot of in the comments of the other video was people thinking that I'd said that you can't pose a dead body. Uh, what I said was you can't make them look as though they are alive. You can prop them up, you cannot prop them up and make them look alive. They're still going to look dead. In my last video, I did say this, the person will not be sitting up, the person will be lying down. Now, I'm gonna ease up on that a little bit. It is possible for a person to be kind of reclined in a chair and be dead. That is certainly possible. I will say that I have not seen very many examples of people seated that I think are convincing. I've seen one example of a person in a chair that I'm absolutely convinced is a post-mortem photograph. And there are a couple other examples of people in chairs that could potentially be post-mortem. However, I stand by the idea that a vast, vast majority of actual post-mortem photographs do represent people reclined. So I do think it's possible to display a dead person in a chair, just not to have them be sitting upright and looking alive. On a similar topic, perhaps the most controversial thing that I said in that last video was that you can't prop up a dead person in a standing position and make them look alive. Like, again, you can kind of have a dead person in rigor mortis and I'd lean them against the wall if you wanted to, but they're not going to look alive and lifelike. I said that, you know, people, people say that there were stands that propped up dead people and made them look alive. That's not true. And it, it is not true. And I had people saying, well, yes, but I've seen photographs with stands clearly visible and you can even buy these stands online. These stands were meant to keep people still during the long exposure times. By the end of the 19th century, 
exposure times weren't that long, but in the mid 19th century, you'd have to stay still for a good 30 seconds. And these stands were meant to grip the back of the head or and or potentially the neck and the waist just to keep you still so the photograph won't be blurry. I'm going to quote from the same article again. Posing stands, Zone explains, are similar to microphone or guitar stands. Though they are made of cast iron, they're not particularly sturdy or heavy, weighing perhaps 20 to 25 pounds. More damningly, they're not counterbalanced. They weren't made for or sturdy enough to actually hold up the weight of a dead body. If you were to set up a corpse on a posing stand, it would certainly topple over. The article continues. An avid photographer himself, Zone researched records so that he could make his own amber types and daguerreotypes. When it came to posing stands, quote, not a single bit of evidence mentions anything about dead people. You can read the actual words of people who were photographers and giving first-hand accounts, as well as the accounts of people who were having their photo taken. We have the catalogs, we have the illustrations, we have every bit of proof that somebody could need. The article concludes by saying pretty much what I said in the last video. As simple as it sounds, if a person looks alive, they're alive. Now, it is true. I am not a forensic expert, and neither is Mike Zone. He's a photographer. However, if you would like a video of an actual undertaker saying what I have just said about standing corpses, I will link it down below, and I will also put it in the cards. So I'm sorry. If you have a photograph of somebody standing, they are not dead. And I know this is not going to convince everybody, but you don't need to be convinced of the truth for it to be true. If somebody is standing in a photograph, they are not dead. Now, some people may say, well, yes, but you haven't really disproved the idea that somebody could use a stand to make somebody look alive. And it's true, I haven't. But it's very difficult, if not impossible, to disprove a negative. I can't say they never did this and here's a photograph of them never doing it. So I can't really do that. But what I can do is show a complete lack of any evidence for this ever being a practice, standing up of dead people and making them look alive. And I can point to common sense and just say, well, well, well just, just think about it logically. How is one of these little dinky stands going to keep a fully grown person upright? It's just, it's just not going to work. I would also like to point out that in the academic method, the person who is making the claim, claiming that something did happen, is the person who has the burden of proof. You can't say, for example, that aliens built the pyramids and then claim it's true because nobody can concretely disprove it. The person making the claim needs to prove the claim for it to be accepted. The person who is not making a claim does not need to disprove every claim in order for it not to be accepted. So I don't need to prove my point. The people who are saying that standing, freestanding, post-mortem photographs were a thing need to prove that they did happen in order for it to be an accepted piece of history. And as I've said, there is no evidence to prove that that was a practice. There is plenty of evidence to prove that post-mortem photographs were a practice, but freestanding, completely lifelike post-mortem photography has absolutely no evidence. And also seated, completely lifelike, completely lifelike post-mortem photography in general has no evidence because they are still going to look dead. A few people also took issue with the elements I listed of my criteria for identifying a genuine post-mortem photograph. Now, first off, I would like to say that I never claimed that these were fact. I never claimed that they were the end-all be-all. Those are just the criteria that I personally use when I'm trying to decide if a photograph is post-mortem or pre-mortem. That being said, there is evidence to back up a lot of what I said, a lot of my different pieces of criteria. For instance, I said that if a photograph is post-mortem, the person in it will likely look dead. They won't look decomposed, but they won't look alive. An article from the Clara Barton Museum says, and I quote, the majority of subjects were depicted as if asleep. This removes much of the difficulty for the photographer. He does not have to pose the deceased or paint the eyes on during development. An article from uh, Dusty Old Thing, I believe it's, yeah. An article from dustyoldthing.com says the following. Most people who were photographed after death were not posed in an elaborate way. Many were photographed in their coffins or on their deathbeds, laid out with flowers or other grave goods to make it obvious that they were dead. Often the goal was not to make them seem alive, but to simply document the subject in their current state and before advanced decomposition had set in. 
I also said that many postmortem photographs will depict children. An article from the William Clements Library of the University of Michigan said, postmortem photographs sometimes show deceased children with their parents or siblings. Photographs, photographers sometimes posed deceased children with toys or other personal effects. I also said that a lot of times people in postmortem photographs are depicted in their coffin. This is another quote from that same article. Open casket photographs were often taken as part of the funeral and burial services in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. They were frequently they were frequently taken in an indoor viewing area outside of the church where the funeral service was held or in the burying place. So, I hope this answers some of your questions. I hope it clears some things up. Again, I'm not trying to convince the people who are calling me delusional or accusing me of lying for my own nefarious purposes. I don't know what nefarious purposes I could have for lying about postmortem photography. But for those of you who didn't automatically hate me, I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope that you'll stay around. A huge, huge thank you to Mary Royal, Kit Kat Stitch, Sandra White, Fee Birchwood, and Emily Donnelly for sponsoring this channel on Patreon. If you would also like to sponsor this channel on Patreon, you can do so down below. No hard feelings if you can't. I'm also going to link to my email down below so you can reach out to me if you want to, and to my Instagram down below where you should definitely follow me. I really hope that you will stick around until next time and we can have some fun. I'm not sure what my next video is going to be, but I promise it'll be fun. Bye-bye. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe and all that and comment. Bye.